Good, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction, and also thanks to Xavier for um, you know putting this meeting together today and bringing us here uh, to talk about you know important matters uh, around schizophrenia and and uh, related uh, disorders. In the first talk, and there's a, there's a whole program uh, for today, which is really very interesting. Um, I mean, this, this talk here and the topic of this talk is obviously very important, um, but that's not the reason why I, why I was put first here. I just wanted to apologize in advance that I have to leave after this talk and it cannot stay on uh, because I have another commitment uh, later on. So managing the, um, the area of schizophrenia and its comorbidities um, is, is very clinically relevant, and we have a, obviously uh, to do with a, with an illness um, to treat holistically and not just sort of the positive and negative symptoms. And you can see my my disclosures here as I as I talk, so you can have a read through. Um, is important clinically, and what want to what we want to do today is we want to talk about some of the management aspects of this and how we can improve, you know, by managing more optimally um, the the illness as such as as a holistic illness. How we can then improve overall outcomes of these patients. So it is relevant to look at mental health, at physical health um, uh, comorbidities, and we've come quite a long way, not just to complain about the fact that patients with schizophrenia have you know, additional comorbidities, and some of the, the problems uh, in the, on the physical side we will see are you know, also in, in sort of medically induced by some of the medications, but also now we have moved on to uh, monitoring uh, some of these more regularly, and we'll talk about the uh, the clinical audit results from the uh, college um, program here, which I'll reduce at the very end. Um, so we, we are really at that stage where we need to do something in, in a clinical setting, and I would like to sort of give you the rationale for that again, why to do it, and then uh, potentially how to do it as well. So the medication-induced diseases in schizophrenia are which, those which you can see here. So they include neurological disorders, you know, Parkinsonism, uh, akathisia, dystonia, as you can see, but also endocrine disorders and metabolic disorders. And the emphasis really has gone in the last few years from, from these, which are a little more classical, if you like, to the meta more metabolic uh, disorders here, obesity, type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, and also hypertension. So we'll focus on those with a, with a greater um, emphasis today. But also mental health comorbidities, including depression, anxiety, um, have been reported you know, very frequently in patients with schizophrenia, um, in addition to the more you know, long-standing involvement of cognitive impairment being uh, a predictive component of outcomes in schizophrenia. So therefore, improving outcomes does mean that we may need to improve also cognitive function in these patients to have better functional and occupational outcomes for these patients. Now, you're all well, well aware of the figures which come from newcomer and others from the United States um, stating that patients with schizophrenia uh, but also other severe mental illness live less long than the general population, so around 20 to 25 years. And I'm, I was very pleased to see that David Castle and, and um, colleagues have looked at that figure for, schi for schizophrenia here in Australia and found in around 10,000 uh, people that patients live you know, around 11 years on average less long than, uh, than the general population. So it's, it's sort of a different figure from the United States. It may have shown some improvement, but it certainly is a figure which is still alarming. You know, if, if one you know, uh, part of our population uh, lives 11 years less than the general population. So therefore, we need to look at what the, the, uh, the causes here are. So when we look at patients with schizophrenia, what they want to primarily uh, see improved, in addition, obviously, to, to their um, schizophrenic symptoms, are those here. So looking at, at weight um, gain and the, the avoidance of that, uh, but also improving treatment outcomes for depression as a comorbidity, and also improving overall quality of life and functionality are the key areas. And this is interesting because this is not specific to schizophrenia patients, but it's also, you know, patients generally rate um, quality of life, well-being as more important uh, and most important actually for them in addition to a symptom reduction um, of their core symptoms. So it's, it's really worthwhile looking at the, the broader involvement um, uh, of treatment goals here. 
And this is also shown here by adverse events, which are sort of induced maybe, um, you know, or which through medications, through other um, uh, lifestyles, for example, but how they affect quality of life. So you can very clearly see that, for example, here, weight gain has a large impact on quality of life, but also things like insomnia and somnolence, uh, cognitive problems, uh, quite a few, and obviously also the disorganized thinking. So these are key elements which impact uh, quality of life um, from, the, from the patient perspective. So let's look at mental health comorbidities in the next few slides. So firstly, starting with depression and anxiety. As I mentioned before, these are very frequent uh, comorbidities in, in patients with schizophrenia, between 25 and 50 percent, depending on the type of study, depending on the uh, type of, of patient population, but a very frequent um, uh, area here, which impact on patients' ability to function, importantly, in addition to the psychotic illness as such. So therefore, what is also to be considered is that some of the antipsychotic medication actually may induce or at least um, not reduce the symptoms of depression. So we need to be kind of aware of the fact that you know, some of the medications we might be using uh, are may maybe not doing a favor to patients with depression and anxiety symptoms. And these psychiatric comorbidities, they are sort of due to a number of different factors why, why they are important. So for example, uh, for clinicians, it's often you know, in, in short or brief um, clinical settings where quick decisions have to be made. Sometimes it's difficult to really disentangle like the, the negative symptoms of schizophrenia from depression, from anxiety, whether uh, we often describe and ascribe also anxiety, depression symptoms as a result of the illness and say, yeah, we'll, we'll understand this and because of stressful situations or certain um, you know, social situations they live in uh, or housing situations. So we kind of you know, have maybe you know, that understanding, which is good, but maybe um, it's also maybe related to an underlying illness, not just as a depressive or anxious reaction to an environmental stressor. So this is really important for us clinicians to see whether that is a, the, the, you know, a treatable and treatment necessary type condition for depression and um, anxiety. Mm -hmm.